The sad fact is, these kids are emerging from all walks of life, different educational backgrounds and diverse financial situations. And what's worse is, a lot of these children are finding their way into our prison system. And it's estimated right now that one in five children in the United States, as high as that, is packing a gun to school out of self-protection. What does that say about our system? Something is terribly awry right now. Unless we address the problems of crime, unless we address the problems of joblessness, we in Australia will experience, I think, the same problems that are existing in places like Chicago, Washington, New York today. That I believe that all these kids are our children and we need to be accountable for them. And it's not the government or anyone else's problem as us it's in, as individuals. So if we're going to go beyond the rhetoric that the children um, are our future, we have to do some things differently. I've been involved in the youth welfare sector for 15 years um, and the, what I see is the situation getting worse, not any better. It's generally agreed that the problems lie in the system, not the people. I'm not saying it's the teachers because teachers are just as much suppressed like the kids are in the system. You know, how many teachers have attempted to speak out against the system? The system of education, if you speak out, you're crushed. School system are school systems. They're not keeping up with the times, and what that does is create desperate people, and desperate people, some of them become criminals, or at least domestic violence because they're not able to keep up financially. We'd better start becoming more mature and more responsible when this idea of money and financial responsibility. Punishment, in one form or another, has somehow always been seen as an accepted part of our society. It sometimes starts quite innocently in our families. It is then reinforced in subtle ways in our schools and workplace. And then, the community hands out its most severe type of punishment to its criminals. Our school system punishes people for making mistakes. The only way a human being learns is by making a mistake. So it starts in our school system, we punish people for making mistakes instead of encouraging them to make mistakes and learn from them. Well, our criminal system's exactly the same way. They've made some mistakes and we're punishing them harder than we do our kids. So the, the school system's a little microcosm, it's only a reflection of a tougher system called a prison system. Our society generally believes that criminals need to be punished. And some believe prisons create a deterrence to crime. Others even feel prisons are correctional institutions, providing a time of reflection and rehabilitation for the criminal. Yet the experts have been telling us for many years that prisons have never been a cure for crime. Anyone who's gone around the prisons, looked in the workshops, gone through the wings, spoken with the prisoners, would say, my God, it's a, a hothouse for producing deterioration in human standards. Why would I be so stupid as to be talking about rehabilitation? The prison system isn't breaking down. It's society that's breaking down, that's filling up the jails. And the problem with jails is it only creates its business school for criminals. That's the problem with going and sending a kid to jail. 70 to 80 percent of the people who go into prison go back to prison or go back to a life of crime. In other words, whatever was supposed to happen in there didn't happen. Unless what you define as what was supposed to happen in there was just punishing them and getting revenge on them. That happened. Most prisons thrive on senseless violence, destroying any sense of self-worth, leaving prisoners with a total sense of futility in their lives. Imagine being locked in a room the size of your bathroom for up to 16 hours a day with no running water. Imagine living in this room with two to three other people you've never met before and couldn't really trust. Imagine living in an atmosphere with a constant threat of violence, rape, drugs and AIDS. Well, this is typical of many prison conditions around the world. The experts agree. A prison system that is primarily designed for punishment and revenge does not deter crime. It never has. All it does is create a breeding ground for more violent behaviour which is then inflicted back on us. Sometimes it can moon your, your life or it can moon your ass. You know what I mean? You can, you can either get sodomised by the system or by the prisoners or you can fight back and the more violent you are, the more they let you run through. Violence is your ticket through the prison system. The human cost alone is absolutely tragic. It doesn't seem to make any sense. On top of that, as taxpayers, we're also paying an enormous economic cost for juvenile delinquency and the running cost of the entire criminal justice system. 
The population of the prison system in America has tripled in the last 10 years. When we lock them up, we have to build new prisons. Now, building new prisons is very expensive. It costs about $70,000 per cell to build a maximum security prison. Then it costs about $20,000 per year per prisoner to keep them in there. That money has to come from somewhere. Where is it coming from? Well, actually, where it's coming from is the education system, the religious system, and the family system, the very systems that are supposed to do the job in the first place.